as you can probably tell from this backdrop, I am actually not, um, oh well, I'm away, I'm away at the moment, I'm not in London, I'm in Bournemouth actually, seeing uh, my in-laws uh, for the weekend, for the Easter weekend. I was unable to watch the game, right? So typically as I tend to do that, like most of us do, I've got my phone with me, I'm keeping up to date that way and trying to see what's going on. Unfortunately then, I have an issue with my phone, I've got, I don't know what's going on with it, but I'll, I'll you know, I won't bore you with it, but basically back battery was plummeting um, and it ran out of battery quite soon after, basically right right after Newcastle scored their first goal. So as you can imagine, I'm out for the day, right? My missus hadn't got her phone with her as well, so I, c- I couldn't keep up to date with what was going on. And I'm playing in my mind thinking, oh, what's going on? I imagine we're 4-0 down and a part of me is thinking maybe we've come back into the game. And all these sort of things are going through my, you know, my mind. Get back to where we're staying, get my phone on, and literally as I get the phone turned on, we score our third goal, Bowen. I'm now catching up with the game, finding out what's been going on. Absolutely buzzing. I've gone from flat all day, trying not to ruin the day while I'm out with the family, to then getting back, like, elated that we're 3-1 up and in cruise control, in absolute cruise control. Um, and, and I'm looking at the table. I do that fatal error. I've talked about it before on the channel. I hate when I do it. But I start looking at the table. I start thinking about, well, if we can beat Tottenham now, we'll be in this position and starting to work it all out. Um, and then, you know, all hell breaks loose. It really did. It was a horrendous um, implosion from West Ham. And do you know what? You just knew it was coming. The second they scored, when they got back to 3-2, that fear came over me. I thought, oh, no, oh, no. Like, you just... I don't worry that we were going to uh, cock it up. And then I start realising the changes that have been made. Um, we'll come to that in a second. Um, and then, of course, we go on to lose the game remarkably. I, I don't know how we've managed to... Con- I think it was three goals we conceded in 13 minutes. Absolutely horrendous uh, from West Ham. I, I, and, uh, you know, like you said, I, I, fuming. Absolutely fuming. Um, still am now. Feels like a bit of a nightmare, doesn't it? When you get that feeling of feel like you're going to get the three points, feeling really good, feeling starting to get a bit excited about the finish to this season, then all of a sudden it just the, the rug is pulled right from underneath you. And I've got to say, it, it's self-inflicted as far as I'm concerned. I don't, I, I, I don't think it's down to Newcastle particularly playing that great and West Ham um, they outdone us. I think it was West Ham that gifted them that. Um, I mean. First of all, the, the, their first the, the first goal, uh, their penalty, um, it looked quite clear, actually, um, to begin with, in terms of Soufal's challenge. I thought it was very clumsy, actually, from Soufal. But then you look back at the replay, and Gordon's offside in the build-up. I'm just getting so exhausted with this VAR, and I hate moaning about it, because it feels like sort of clutching at straws and moaning, and people, are, I, I put up a tweet, and people say, oh, I'll just get over it, you can't keep, keep blaming VAR. And, I, you know, all right, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not here to say, oh, it's all VAR's fault, we would have won otherwise. But, you know, why, where is the consistency with this poxy technology? Why is it they continually just do not keep a consistent um, ruling when it comes to making decisions? I just It drives me insane. Gordon's offside. It shouldn't have been a penalty. But anyway, it was. But West Ham came back and we played really well. Some wonderful goals. Um, first, obviously, from Mikel Antonio. Broke through. Um, slotted it away uh, brilliantly from him. Um, Kudas then got us uh, in the lead right before the half-time break. Uh, a wonderful strike from him to the top corner. Um, the keeper got a, got a hand to it, but it still went in. It was brilliant. Um, and then Jared Bowen looked to have wrapped up the result, really. You know, 20 minutes to go. I think it was 71st minute he scored. Um, he was put through uh, by Kudas. Lovely from Bowen. He's typical way. He pulls the goalkeeper out and just fired it into the bottom corner. You know, we're in cruise control. Absolute cruise control. And then David Moyes does his... Um, I don't know whether it's David Moyes... Um, desperately trying to get a player involved that's not playing well. It always feels like he just has to try and get Phillips on that pitch. I don't know what it is or whether he's just so desperate to defend. It's very hard to pin out. But at the end of the day, you're playing well. You know, you're in a really strong position. Why change it? Why change it? And you could argue, well, OK, look, Michael Antonio's only just come out from injury. Um, he's not going to be able to play the 90 minutes. If that's the answer. I mean, I don't believe that. Cause bearing in mind, he's not been playing for the last couple of weeks. So I'm struggling to believe that. But even if that is the case, then you end up putting up a striker on. You know, keep the same system that you're doing. You don't switch the system around when you're doing well. I just don't understand it. I'd get it if we were clinging on. If we were clinging on to that, and you're thinking, you know, they're battering our goal and we're just hanging on for dear life here to try and see the game out, then you might understand it. So I'll tell you what, Antonio's not in the game anymore. Bring on Phillips or whatever, just to try and shore up the midfield a little bit, just to keep things a little bit tighter and then maybe just see the game out. You'd understand it a bit more. I'd have a little bit more sympathy, but not when you're playing well. Not when you're causing them problems and Antonio's still very much in the game. I would just find it baffling. I would have just kept him on, personally. I would have just kept him on. It was a really rookie 
error um, from David Moyes there, a really poor one, um, and adds more to, you know, fuel to the fire, doesn't it, of his uh, position at the club. Um, I'm not here to just you know, bang on about David Moyes in and out. I'm certainly not. I think we've had enough of that at the moment. But it's going to be you know absolutely a lot of uh, David Moyes out situations going on at the moment because of that result. But it's, it is horrendous. Really, really bad from the from, from the manager, uh, from the club, to let that happen. Um, I'm absolutely disgusted. I'm really upset, and like we all are, to, to see us implode like we did, to be in such a strong position in such a big game as well. If we won that game, oh my God, we'd have been in such a comfortable, well, comfortable position is wrong, but a strong position uh, going into the final eight games of the season. Can you imagine if we'd have beaten Newcastle and beaten Spurs? We'd have been in cruise control going into the final few games, thinking we only need a couple more wins here and we've got Europe. It is horrendous. Uh, really, really bad um, from the club. And David Moyes, I think, has to take a fair amount of the, the, the stick for this because he's the one that instigated that change. He's the one that's made that decision. I just don't understand why you do that when you're playing so well. When you're really on top, why, why change things? Why would you have in your mind, right, I'm going to switch the formation, I'm going to change the system, I'm going to take off a player that's doing so well and being so effective. I, I just do not understand it. It totally derailed the game for West Ham. The game, And, you know, look what we ended up with. How can you be 3-1 up in a crucial game with 20 minutes to go and end up losing? It's really, really poor. And... It's, it, it's more so as well, not just the fact that we've lost the game. Because losing to Newcastle is no shame in that, OK? It's not a horrendous thing, but, but the circumstances, of course, are what make it bad. Um, but it's the manner... What, what I worry about more is the psychological impact that's going to have now on West Ham. Um, I mean, I, I don't know about yourself, but now my confidence has drained in the idea of us now getting into Europe next season. You know, it, it just drains you, doesn't it? I, I wonder, worry what that's done to the dressing room. I really hope it hasn't affected us the way I'm, I'm concerned that it has. I'm hoping that the um, players can respond on Tuesday night, go and get a result against Spurs and lift that mood quickly. I mean, we're, we're, I'm lucky. We, we're, well, I think we've got an element of luck, the fact that we've got that game there because it's a big game. It's under the floodlights against Spurs at home. If, you've got, if you're going to want to get, you know, draw a line under a bad result, there's no better opportunity to do that. But Tottenham, you know, they've just beaten... Um, Obviously, Luton, um, but they're not they're not flying at the moment, so it's probably not the worst time to be playing them. But look, it's it's a really bad day, and David Moyes, in my opinion, has got to take um, the responsibility for that. Um, obviously, Calvin Phillips is going to get a lot of stick. I'm going to talk about Calvin Phillips in another video, of course, because of the situation that he's now in. Um, basically, Calvin Phillips was filmed uh, leaving the ground, and fans were giving him some stick, and basically just gave him the middle finger as he got onto the team bus. I, uh, really poor from him. Look, I understand it's, you know, it's a human being, and no one likes criticism, and people shouting at you, but you're a professional footballer. It's, it's part and parcel of the game, isn't it? You've been, look, you've been getting stick shouting at you since the age of probably... 13, 12, you know what I mean, playing football. You, you, they're used to it every week. It's just normal. So for him to react like that's not good. Um, his, his loan has been a horrendous horrendous signing, isn't it? It's, it's been awful, this loan spell from, from Phillips at West Ham. Um, and, of course, he gave away the penalty. Um, I actually felt for him, though, in that decision. I, I thought the referee got that completely wrong. It is an absolutely zero intent um, from Phillips whatsoever. I, 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 that's surely got to be part of the decision-making. If the player's literally legitimately has gone to kick the ball and had no no knowledge of the player coming in, surely he can't give a penalty. I, I mean, I don't know the rules enough to to, to comment if, whether they've got it whether they've got it right or wrong. But I mean, it feels really harsh, and, it, and yet again, um, more VAR controversy with West Ham. It just feels week in week out, doesn't it? Every game we play, I'm waiting for the next lot on Tuesday when we get screwed. Up. It just feels like we're getting kicked every week. Um, two bad decisions. Uh, so Anthony Gordon was offside for their first penalty. In the build up, and again, for some reason, just completely ignored. Um, I mean, you've got Par- you know, you've got Paddy Power taking the piss out of it, saying, you know, about <laughs> about the decision making process in, in that particular decision with Gordon being offside. Then we get the penalty again later on. It's like two penalties, and really, well, in my opinion, it shouldn't have been penalties. It does feel like we're getting screwed over, but that doesn't take anything away or take the pressure, in my opinion, off David Moyes because that was horrendous. That was absolutely horrendous from the manager to decide to make a change at that stage when we're playing so well, take off a player that's being so effective. Why? Why? Why would you do that? Honestly, that bloke—he just—he he just seems so hell bent to shoot himself in the foot sometimes. Um, and so naive, and you worry. I wonder what the conversations are on that bench with David Moyes and his team. 
Because, you know, if you're a coach and you're next to David Moyes, surely you'd be saying to him, David, just leave it. Like, just leave it. We're playing well. You don't need to change the system. Why would you change your system when you're playing really well? As I've said, I'd get it if, if we were under pressure, if we were struggling. You could see we were struggling and hanging on. Then maybe you go, look, I've got to do something just to see, us, to see this game out. I'd, I'd totally get it then. And then if that had unfolded afterwards, you'd have sympathy for the manager. You'd go, well, look, you could see what he was trying to do. But not when you're on top, not when you're playing well. It's terrible. Really, really bad. Um, oh, I'm, I'm absolutely gutted. Absolutely gutted today. Um, yeah, it's... As I say, there's no shame in losing to Newcastle, but to be 3 1 up with 20 minutes to go in a game like that it, and to lose, to come away with nothing, at least get us a fucking point. You know what I mean? Just get us something from the game. Absolutely terrible. Terrible. But it is what it is, and it? it is what it is, and there's going to be a lot of fallout from this. As I say, thank God we play quickly. Thank God we got a game on Tuesday because I just want to draw a line under that fast, and I hope we can go and respond against Tottenham, but I worry. I do worry about the psychological, uh, about the impact that's had on those players and the manager and everyone because I, I certainly feel flat. I've got, my confidence has waned massively now after that. Um, really poor. Uh, and I feel for the fans that have gone away, well, you know, it's a long old trip, isn't it? And um, I just hope they, you know, at least they've got back all right and a, a decent, made a decent weekend of it as best they can because, yeah, that's, that's a tough one to take. But look, it is what it is. David Moyes is going to get the flack and rightly so. But we've got to make sure we put it right on Tuesday night. Come on, you irons.